brought to you by Almond Auctions, world's leader in antique tractor auctions. In Northern California, you'll see lots of famous landmarks. The island of Alcatraz, the incomparable Golden Gate Bridge, and the world-renowned wineries of the Napa Valley. Not far from all of these, in the wine grape country near Lodi, is another famous landmark, or at least it should be. It's the home of two guys named Bill. They're the Bechtolds, a father-son team who've put together the world's foremost collection of Kletrak tractors. I, the last count I had, which was several years ago, I have over 100 tractor Kletraks. And they're, uh, I think I've got the best and the biggest collection of Kletraks you might say in the world. I haven't heard of any other country that has them. And my tractors all vary from 1916 all up until the last clay track made. The family really started using them um, in 1916, 1917 when clay track first came out. The first track layers or the first tractors that we had uh, for farming when we got away from using horses were clay tracks. And of course my dad had clay tracks and all my uncles around me had clay tracks both sides of the family. So naturally, I uh, lean towards clay tracks. Clay tracks have been part of Bill's life since his life began in 1921. He worked for the local clay track dealer before quitting to go grape farming and to start Bechtold Tractor Service. From old photos to old tractors lined up out back just waiting to be brought back to life, well, it's always clay track time at the Bechtolds. And back in the 1930s when Bill was just 18 or so, he even built his own clay track toys from wood. One was powered by electricity and had a working transmission made from clock parts. You just see that conglomeration of gears? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Bill Bechtold is the clay track man. I get a lot of people coming over to my place throughout the years. They've never seen that many clay tracks. And in fact, they didn't know clay track made one like that, you know. I hear all kinds of comments, you know. <laughs> and some of these track layers, even though they're more than 50 years old, are still working the Bechtold Vineyards today. Uh, today I'm putting in some furrows for irrigation. Uh, are we really ready for harvest, but the winery's not ready for our grapes yet, so they said we'll put some water on them and you know, keep them in good shape. Uh, this little tractor back here is an AD Klee track. It's one of the more popular models uh, in the recent past uh, in the Lodi area. Uh, it belonged to one of our customers at one time. My dad serviced it uh, most of its life, and uh, when the guy decided he was going to quit farming, uh, we had it more or less donated to our collection. Just like it says under the name, the Cleveland Tractor Company's machines were built to endure. One of the family favorites is this one. This is a Model 15 clay truck, and uh, I always look at it as the beginning of the excellent clay trucks because it had the modern day features in them that we have of today or the last production models anyway, and they held up extremely well. This one looks a little different, Bill. I thought clay tracks were orange. They, I get that all the time. They, they, all clay tracks are painted orange. <laughs> and it, kind of tickles me because uh, they haven't seen all the clay tracks, you know. Turns out orange clay tracks didn't come on the scene until 1937. Another unusual feature of the 15 was the toolbox located right in the middle of the hood. With the Hercules gas engine, the 1931 clay track 15 cost a little over $1,200 new. Not a bad investment considering this little powerhouse could still do a day's work nearly 70 years later. And uh, there's just still many clay tracks running in the country here around our place that still have the original tracks. And this is an original track set up here. Lots of them. To go along with its track system, clay tracks also had a different kind of steering system with levers that turn the tractor with just the touch of a finger. Instead of using clutches and brakes to, uh, to uh, uh, make a corner, uh, these actually had a planetary gear system in the back, e back end where a band would tighten down on a, on a drum. It would slow one track down but speed the other one up. In other words, it slows this track down about 10% and it speeds that one up over there about 10%. So you make a round turn. Under full load, that round turn will turn a heavier load than a clutch tractor steering. 
and uh, that was one of the Cletrax features that they used from day one until the last day. In the wider vineyard rows today, you'll see mostly wheeled tractors, and they're not built in Cleveland. But the Bechtolds aren't the only ones who like Cletrax. There are others who still like to use these powerful old track machines too. Uh, we do have one uh, uh, member of our, our Oliver Clee Track Club that has a winery and a vineyard in the Santa Cruz Hills and he exclusively uses Clee Track crawler tractors in the, in the um, uh, um, growing of his grapes. That's right, Clee Track Chardonnay, produced from grapes farmed only with Clee Tracks. Now if you're thinking about fixing up your own Clee Track, and who could blame you, Remember this one piece of advice from a man who knows. There's been more people that have these do not properly lubricate this tractor. They go to an oil companies and the oil companies will sell them grease, you might say. These rollers are all supposed to be running oil, O-I-L, oil. You can bet Bill keeps them oiled up and ready to work in this, the 21st century, still a part of California's farming history.